All right, week nine of college football season. It is upon us, and we have got you covered here. Another edition of the college football show here on Bet On It with two of the best. This Kelly Stewart back in the saddle again, ready to roll. Marco D'Angelo with some absolute disgustingness coming your way here, and we'd have it no other way on Bet On It uh, than that way, Marco. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, getting down to the nitty gritty here in week nine, we got a couple of top 25 matchups we're going to break down for you. We'll talk some double digit dogs. We're going to fade Joe Public. We're going to talk a few sandwiches, some best bets, and of course, Yanni the Greek will join us with some gold. But Marco, let's start. Kick us off here with a big matchup here of two teams in the SEC that seem to be going the wrong way. Alabama taking on Mizzou here, 13 and a half, 43 and a half as a total. What are we doing with these two underperforming teams? Uh, well, <laughs> Joe, I don't know if I'm qualified to talk about two teams in the top 25. <laughs> because, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, this is going to be a fun show, guys. I'm just going to tell you to buckle up and hang on because <laughs> Kelly is just – I have never seen Kelly smile so much in pre-production as she has this week in, for this show. Why? And I'm just, I'm, it, it, why? I, I have no idea just so you know, I am not worried about what you did or did not do last week. I'm over here working on my survivor. <laughs> Jackson John Murray. I'm, I'm waiting for you to break down this SEC matchup that I'm also going to talk about during the double digit dog segment. So I'm going, shit, yeah, maybe I uh, okay. maybe I should have worked better on the script. Anyway. Okay. Hi, yeah. Did that text to John Murray have you know be anything like if you thought I busted your balls? Wait till you see how I roast Marco on this show. Okay. No, <laughs> Got it's, a little John's later. gonna get his on Kelly and Murray. It's coming. Uh, I think mm -hmm. he has to eat like a whole ram rum ham or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, buckle up. All right. Oh, this game here, we're looking at mm. Missouri and Alabama, guys. It <laughs> is not Halloween yet. And Alabama has two losses. Oof. Okay, I can't remember the last time that's happened. And normally, when a team like Alabama gets their second loss, I would be coming on here talking about the Dream Crusher game. Well, that was the old college football. Because if you had two losses, your season was over if your goals were the national championship because of the four-team playoff format. But this is football 2024, and we've got 12 teams that are going to make the playoffs. We've got the SEC that currently has nine teams residing in the top 25, and they're beating each other up. <laughs> they keep knocking each other off. So by season's end, if Alabama runs the table and only has two losses, they could still find themselves, believe it or not, in the SEC championship game, which would be an automatic path to the playoffs, or we're also going to find, I'm pretty sure we're going to see a two loss team from the SEC in the playoffs as well. So the dream crusher scenario is not there yet with that second loss. Now, with that said, they're playing Missouri this week, and I look for them to bounce back in a big way. I am not impressed with Missouri. They're in the top 25. They've been there all year. They keep sliding their way down. Last week, once again, <clears throat> Missouri was life and death with Auburn. Auburn led that game the whole way, and Missouri rallied late to get the four-point win, laying three and a half uh, to Auburn. Uh, sorry, Auburn backers. Uh, that was a tough loss for you. And I'm just not sold on this team. They haven't played as tough of a schedule as Alabama has played so far. And the two step-up teams that they played, look at, you know, they played Vanderbilt, who at the time was not a top 25 team. They are now just inside the top 25. Uh, they only beat them by three. They played Texas A&M. That was the best team they played to date. And they got absolutely steamrolled by Texas A&M, 41 to 10. And then, as I said last week, Auburn, the next best team they've played, uh, they were life and death, 21 to 17. I think Alabama is going to be able to move the football on this Missouri defense. And I think that once they get a little bit of separation and Missouri has to start throwing the football to equal the scores of Alabama, that's when the turnovers are going to happen. And this Alabama team, the last four games, they have had 11 takeaways uh, in the last four games. 
That's what I'm looking for here. I look for Alabama to score early and often. Let's call it Alabama 41 to 20. I'm laying it with the tie. Ooh, laying it with the tie. Those are uh, two actually halfway decent teams, Marco. We will have you talk about no more of that uh, moving forward here on the show. Instead, we are going to move uh, to another top 25 matchup. Uh, featuring, oh, look at this, the number one team in the country, Kelly, uh, the Oregon Ducks, or at least the undefeated team in the country, taking on uh, Illinois here, and uh, what, laying over three touchdowns, 54 and a half, can we trust Oregon to lay that kind of number even at home? No. I mean, Dan Lanning <laughs> as a home favorite is, he's all right. I don't think it's like, trusting them they don't deserve to be number one in the country i put out a poll every single week for outkick i didn't make them number one i was the only one that didn't and just because they're undefeated doesn't make them number one whatsoever the team i can trust is brett bielema as a road underdog 11 and 3 against the spread i know this line is high and it's probably high for a reason and that's because this ducks offense just keeps going keeps firing they're very very efficient and uh, what do we know about Illinois? Well, they got a really solid defense. So while I'm not going to get to the window with my hard-earned money on this team, I do like the dog here. Shocking, I know. I didn't like him last week against Michigan. I was sitting at the bar with Ariel Epstein, and an Ohio State fan was the left of me and goes, oh, I love Michigan. Or, excuse me, I love Illinois in this spot. And I said, of course you do because you're an Ohio State fan. I go, this one's a little tricky. And the line I had no problems. Win 21-7 as a three-and-a-half-point home underdog. I think this train keeps on rolling. While I'd like to see them upset the number one team in the country that is undefeated because I enjoy those types of things, I don't know if they're actually going to be able to win it out, right? I do think Caden uh, Fagan being out for the rest of the season does not bode well for this Illinois offense, but keeping it within the 21 and a half certainly seems feasible. All right. Keeping it within that number, never a, a bad look here, especially uh... – well, Bielema's uh, been halfway decent in spots like this before, expecting Illinois to keep it close. And then, of course, what the hell do we do after the uh, just absolute thrashing by the Georgia Bulldogs as Texas now is going to try to bounce back against the scrappiest team in the country who everybody thought last week was going to have the flat spot of all flat spots there, uh, taking on Ball State, that being Vanderbilt here now. Uh, they're late. They're getting 18 and a half at home. 53 and a half is the total. This is the first meeting between these teams in a very, very long time. But the difference is Vanderbilt is coming in on a three game winning streak right now, beating Bama, Kentucky and last week, Ball State, who nobody thought they would. Uh, and this kid, Pavia, man, let's face it, he's got Vanderbilt believing certainly offensively that they can score and keep up with anybody. I don't know how that's going to work against Texas, who, again, had just absolutely embarrassed themselves in the first half there. They were held to 38 total yards in the first half against Georgia, and they trailed 23 to nothing. I, I mean, Diego Pavia is the real deal here. Is he going to be able to do enough against this defense in order to be able to keep it within this number? I mean, the Longhorns have a much better edge on defense, but they are on the road here. This is a tough, tough game. I can't imagine Vandy winning this game. I also can't imagine Vandy trying to keep this thing um, within 18 and a half, and that's the problem. So it's the total that I would look at in this one here, and I do think the Texas defense will win out against the Vanderbilt offense. And I'm not exactly sold here on the Texas offense going on the road and putting up some monster numbers. So it would only be an under look for me here at 53 and a half. But those that have been back in Vandy to this point, well, there's no reason for you to be a home dog getting 18 and a half, not to go ahead and throw a little something there on this game, but uh, a little too rich for my blood. I'll stick with the under. 53 and a half. All right. It is uh, week nine here of the college football season. Time for a little gold with Yanni the Greek here in VR. We're, uh, I can't believe, past the halfway point here, but the gold continues to roll in here during the week. What do we know so far? 
Well, at this time of year, Joe, this is what you take advantage of. And that's the, the misconception out there of what the best teams are. You just look at the rankings and it's more or less a popularity contest based on, on record and nothing more. I mean, the, the fact that they have Oregon at number one tells you everything you need to know. Because on a neutral field, Oregon's about 10, 11 points better than your average college football team based on the data and stats to date, strength on schedule, everything. You look at a team like Alabama, they're over 30 points better than mm. your average college football team. Clemson, over four touchdowns better than your average college football team. Ohio State, 26 points better. Oklahoma, 24 points better. Georgia, 21 points better. Florida, 17 points better. Mm. So you get what I'm getting at. Oregon is not the number one team in the country. They're simply the undefeated team in the country. And that's why they're sitting at number one. This is where you could take advantage of a lot of teams that just are, are ranked incorrectly. Oregon's barely a top 15 team based on analytics and anything predicted that we care about. Penn State, barely a top 20 team. And yet, where are they sitting at? Top five? You look at Tennessee, barely in the top 25 of any, any sharp power ratings. And yet, the AP's got them in the top 10. That's where you get to take advantage of teams like that, like an old Miss. They got them in their top 20. No, there's not a wise guy that has old Miss in their top 30, <laughs> let alone their top 20. So it's, it's a lot of, that we're that far in the season where you can really take advantage of a lot of those rankings. I just saw Pittsburgh in the top 20. Pittsburgh, the power rankings that one of the sharpest college guys I work with sent me has Pittsburgh at 37th. Like mm. they're not even in his top 30. And they got uh, Pittsburgh here at 19. So it's that time of the year we could really take advantage uh, uh, of some of those um, big name schools that may have the record, but just don't have the team to back it, meaning the numbers just don't uh, reflect it. Let's get into some of that college football action that I'm talking about. Start off with a team total. We'll get that out of the way. It's Jacksonville State, game 108. They're going under 42 team total. Now we'll move on to some weekday games and Saturday as well. These are the, the, the ones I've been able to confirm. We haven't seen any two-way action. We haven't seen any uh, resistance or setups from other groups. 115 Louisville minus six and a half. 119 Bowling Green Toledo over 47. 124 Central Florida money line and minus one. 125 North Carolina plus the five. Uh, 155 Michigan State plus the five and a half, big game there. 165, LSU plus the three, but Texas A&M minus two and a half. So that's one of those games where you're if, if they're seeing two and a half, they're going to lay the, the A&M side. If they're able to get three, especially fair juice, they're going to take the three because it's such a key number, expect to be such a tight game. A half a point makes all the difference. Wild. 172, BY, Baylor, excuse me, minus four, minus four and a half. Throw Notre Dame in there at minus 12 and a half. And then some of the later stuff, Washington State, San Diego State over 55 and a half, West Virginia, Arizona under 56, 55 and 54. That's why I've only given you the totals that I could confirm with certainty have been legit. And finally, last game on the board, the bailout, Hawaii, Hawaii plus two and a half, Hawaii plus one and a half, Hawaii plus one. During all of that, they're hitting Hawaii on the money line as well. So a lot of Hawaii money. Don't be surprised if Hawaii goes off as the favorite and the under as well, 48 and 47. As of right now, I would think that the biggest position is the Hawaii side just because they were blasting it two different ways off screen first. And uh, then probably that Michigan State, the Michigan State side where I was getting hit at the best number, at the second number, at the third number. So they wanted some of that Michigan State uh, action before it got down to any number that really mattered. That's what's going on pretty much in college football this early in the week. But again, got to check in with last call when I dive in Saturday with Kelly because we're able to narrow it down to some of the stronger positions, talk about some of the setups that we might have missed earlier in the week, and of course, find out where all the money's going so we could determine whether some of that those lines actually reflect that money or if there's some shadiness we could take advantage of. So it's pretty much what's going on in college football. I can't believe... Oh, my God. They got LSU at top eight. Wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Crazy, crazy. These rankings are nuts. That time of year, uh, VR. But, again, why it's important uh, to join us 
uh, each and every Saturday for Last Call, beginning at 11 a.m. Eastern time before those 12 o'clock kickoffs. Get all the latest gold and the movement you need to know on Saturday. So, VR, we appreciate it. As always, best of luck Thank this you, brother. week. We'll see you again on Saturday, but it is time, of course, to talk some double-digit dogs. Shout out to my good friend, Pam Maldonado. She texted me this morning and goes, Kelly, what do you think about Mizzou, Alabama? And I said, uh, I'll look at it a little bit for you. Like, I had no desire to play it. And about six hours later, it's now my uh, double-digit dog. I think they can win outright. Come, life comes at you fast uh, here on beautiful Wednesday mornings of bet on it. And that's because I started looking into this one a lot more. And I know Marco mentioned that Texas A&M loss. I was on Texas A&M, but I'm going to tell you about this Mizzou Tigers team. This is what they do. They play up to their level of competition every single week. They also play down to it. Brady Cook currently questionable, so keep an eye there. Hopefully things don't go sideways and he is back under center. Both teams have a bye week next week, so that's probably good news for both of them. As Marco mentioned, Mizzou was just in a dogfight or I guess a cat fight, if you will, with the Auburn Tigers last week, but they got it done. Maybe they were looking ahead to this one. We will see. Now on to uh, now on to Alabama. Jalen Milro had by far his worst game we have seen of the season. He threw two interceptions, did not have a rushing touchdown. Now, while I think he is a potent part of this Alabama offense and is not the only reason why they lose football games, boy, oh boy. Uh, can't believe this team is 0-2. You've got A.J. McCarron putting out t uh, tweets saying they care more about TikTok than winning football games. Alabama has not been a good favorite at home for the last couple of years, especially when laying double digits. I think Alabama's got some real issues on defense, which is why these games keep going over the total. Well, you know whose games don't go over the total? Mizzou's. And that's because they do show up and they do play defense. I'm going to take the better defense here with the Missouri Tigers playing against, well, maybe a defeated Alabama team. Who thought they'd be 0-2 before Halloween? I know Tennessee's defense is good and they deserve that win. But man, if you allow Alabama to not play up tempo and throw them out of their mix, that is how you beat them. Eli Drinkowitz, take notes because I need you to cash this. Money line winner, these double-digit dogs have been fun all season long. And even though we don't have a good record, we're making money because that outright cash on any of these over 10 points has been really, really profitable. That's a lot of points, boy, to be trusted. Uh, this ain't the Alabama at all. Saban ain't walking through that door anytime soon here, people. In fact, he's walking through the dressing room door laughing his ass off uh, right now and saying, ha, told you so. Uh, Marco, in the meantime, um, let the disgustingness begin, if we can, because I understand the deli is open and uh, you are serving up uh, some crap sandwiches. So what do you have for us here today that we are looking at? Uh, I, I love the way you guys just spread the love around with me, you know, the big old family here. All right. Uh, Joe, uh, yeah, your comps revoked at the deli. You're going to have to pay. You come in. All right. We're taking a look here at Maryland and Minnesota. And last week, Maryland, uh, big win for them. Uh, they beat USC at home. You get USC come to your house and win in your Maryland. That's a big time game and I think you run the risk of still celebrating that win here this week going back out on the road and I realize that Minnesota also in their last home game uh beat well two back excuse me beat USC as well but I'm looking at the spot here you got Maryland off that win and their next game, granted, it's in two weeks, so please don't at me on X. And you notice I said X, guys, not, mm. not Twitter, so you didn't yell at me for that, too. Uh, <laughs> that they play in two weeks. I realize that. So it's not a complete sandwich. It's a sandwich and a half because they got a week in between. But when you're sandwiched between playing USC and Oregon is the next game, that's a pretty goddamn big sandwich. I'm sorry. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, The number one team in the country is coming up, and you're coming off a big high beating USC. And then let's look at Minnesota. Uh, This is a team that, yeah, offensively, they're not flashy. They never have been. But defense is good. And I like them here to stop this Maryland uh, offense. And if Maryland falls behind in this game against this Minnesota defense, uh, it's going to be tough. Minnesota has held five of their seven opponents to 19 points or less. I don't see Maryland being able to move the football in this one. Also, Minnesota has a ball hawking defense. They forced six turnovers in their last two games, and that's now four of their seven games this season that they have uh, forced three or more turnovers in a game. That's also bad news for Maryland. I'm going to take the PJ Flex, and I'm going to row, row, row all the way to the cashier's window with my ticket. Give me Minnesota. I got them winning this one 27 to 16. I'll lay it with the Gophers. Ooh, laying it with Minnesota for a slight disgusting sandwich this week, Marco, but they are delicious, especially when they cash, so no doubt. And just a quick reminder, don't forget to smash that like button for us. Hit the subscribe if you haven't done so already. And don't forget, you can get every edition of the football gold sheet through the Super Bowl and every daily edition of the basketball gold sheet through the NBA Finals. For just $2.99, all you got to do is visit wagertalk.com forward slash gold sheet to purchase. A big fade the public alert uh, coming up uh, this week. Uh, We too will head to the Big Ten and the the public seems to just be running and loving their Penn State Nittany Lions coming off a bye week traveling to Wisconsin to take on the Badgers, but let's be realistic here. Has anybody been watching uh, Wisconsin over the last uh, three weeks? They have finally started to hit their stride. It was a little slow go early on in the season for Wisconsin, but they look like they have finally figured it out, and uh, not with the quarterback that they imported from Miami, Van Dyke, who's got hurt, but a familiar face that's been on campus for a little while in Brandon Locke. Uh, They have basically figured out some things offensively, but to me, the more important thing is they have figured it out defensively. They had been giving up far too many big plays uh, in games against Alabama, uh, we have seen here, and uh, USC, in fact. Uh, But they have cleaned that up. The secondary has tightened uh, down. They're not giving up the explosive plays of rushing here uh they did however drop a whole lot of points against purdue and rutgers and of course last week uh that uh that game they are northwestern uh 23 to 3 i do like the way this wisconsin team is starting to play listen camp randall has historically been a very difficult place to play not to mention penn state yes coming off the bye but guess who penn state has next week That's right. Ohio State on deck. So I think this is at most going to be a field goal game. I don't expect it to be a high scoring game because you know what Penn State doesn't do? They don't have that explosive 80 yard rushing touchdown. They don't have uh, that big uh, 75 yard uh, touchdown pass. They don't do it often enough, which is sometimes why Penn State is laying these big numbers but can't get them covered I don't think they're going to go on the road and all of a sudden light up this rejuvenated Wisconsin team. So I get the public loves themselves some Penn State. Not me, though. I think Wisconsin's got plenty of value to take the six and a half right now. We'll be fading Joe Public this week. All right, time for a little TNA with the pen. Mr. Ralph Michaels ready to roll here. Week nine, uh, Ralph. And interesting game here in uh, the ACC coming up with SMU and Duke. What does uh, what does the TNA tell us about this game? Well, you know, I know VR was going to talk about some misleading teams as far as good records and where they rank. I think this Duke team is a very misleading team. Mm. Granted, I give Manny Diaz incredible credit for what he's done, especially with the defense. But look at who SMU has played this year. Northwestern is my number 83 team. UConn 101. 
Middle Tennessee, 132. North Carolina, number 81. Florida State, number 70. So they played one top 70 team this year, and that was Georgia Tech, who I have right now at number 40 in my power ratings. Well, SMU is number 15. And when you look at what Duke did against that one top 70 team they faced, that was that Georgia Tech team that they got out gained by 133 yards. And while you say, well, they bounced back and beat Florida State last week, they had 180 yards of offense and they were plus four turnovers. Listen, 98% of the teams win if you're plus four turnovers. So again, another very misleading win. When I go to the database, Conference home dogs of 10 or more off a conference win are only 34.6% against the spread since 2017, 45 wins, and 85 ATS losses. A play on system for SMU. If you are a conference road favorite of six and a half or more that has gone at least 2-0 and straight up in ATS the last couple games, and the opponent is off a win as a home favorite and they covered after week four. Those situations, 39 and 17, mm. 70% against the spread. And then when I look at the stats, this is the clincher. Full season stats, SMU has played the number 34 schedule. They are number 18 at plus 1.64 yards per play. Duke, the number 76 schedule. So a, a 42 spot lower strength of schedule, and they are number 52 at minus 0.32 yards per play. Situation calls for Duke. Strength of schedule calls for Duke. Stats call for Duke. The Blue Devils this week. Oh, man. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, Ralph, is what it sounds like uh, to me. A uh, heck of a way to look at it, uh, Duke. Taking some points here this week against SMU. And Ralph, what do you got locked, loaded, ready to roll over at wagertalk.com as we head into this week number nine? Uh, I've got a big five-star NFL play. You don't want to miss out on that. A 62% run on all plays since September 20th. So make sure you check it out. We've got a great 249 30-day special for any capper. And what a time to get it. College football, NFL, NHL, NBA, and college hoops. 30 days, $249. A little something for everybody. Ralph Michaels, the pen, at it again. Ralph, we'll see you on the NFL bet on it edition. But now it is time for some best bets. All right. We're going to start with Marco, mostly because we want to get this disgusting this over as soon as as possible here and uh marco if anybody uh can find and dive in the dumpster like you and give us a little <laughs> nugget of gold or like an old watch or something it's you my friend so uh where are you going for a best bet this week uh i actually had to look this up uh so tell me uh we didn't even have a logo for this team because that's how little we have ever paid attention to them but this is a big game marco for you best bet where are you heading this week I love you guys. I'll tell you, I really do. And yeah, Kelly usually goes first, but Kelly wanted to make sure she had the last word uh, to beat me up some more. I'm sure uh, we're going to go to the Mac. Okay, Ooh. you know it, it, it's the Mac, and we're not going out, you know, somewhere into the backwoods here. Okay, I don't think there's any Waffle Houses on the <laughs> Mac Trail, but we'll see. I'm not allowed to go to them anymore, anyways. But here we go. I'm taking Bowling Green, and this is the time of the year, guys, and I did it last year. You know, I, I know it seems like eons ago after last week's performance, but you remember when we had that 11-game winning streak last year on the college best bets? Um, yeah, we had a lot of teams just like this one because this is the time of the year where we find lines that just don't make sense, have you scratching your heads, and if you don't go do your homework, you're going to run to the window betting the wrong team. And we've got a 5-2 and two Toledo team that's only laying 2.5 at home to a 3-4 and four Bowling Green team. I can tell you there's a lot of people running to the window thinking they got free money with Toledo. But here's why 
It isn't. And this is why you got to do your homework. And it's why you don't solely use statistics, season long statistics, because teams play much different schedules during the month of September. And this is what I'm going to point out to you. Uh, Toledo's first three games of the season was Duquesne. And for those of you that don't know, Duquesne is a small little school uh, in Pittsburgh. Uh, yeah, they don't even really have a football team. They got drilled 49-10, to 10, did Duquesne. And then the next week they played Massachusetts, another team that really probably shouldn't have a football team. They drilled them 38-23. to 23. Then they finally played an SEC team in week three in the out-of-conference schedule. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe the worst team in the SEC, Mississippi State. Congratulations, Toledo. Job well done. And you ran up some impressive stats that until the season uh, goes deeper, those numbers are going to be just inflated the wrong way. Now, what did Bowling Green do in the off in, out-of-conference schedule? They opened the season up with Fordham. Okay, they had a patsy there. But then they went to Happy Valley and played Penn State. After that, if that wasn't enough, and oh, by the way, they only lost by seven to Penn State. And I think Penn State's uh, ranked pretty high right now. And after that, they went to Texas A&M. Back to back, you played Penn State and Texas A&M on the road. And oh, what did you do there? You only lost by six to Texas A&M. I think they're ranked pretty high as well. Point is, it's a difference of schedules, and you learn from playing better teams. This is a team, it's only two and a half for a reason. And to be honest with you, the wrong team is favorite. I'm going to go ahead and I'm taking Bowling Green, taking them plus the points. I'm taking them on the money line. They win this game going away 27 to 17. And oh, by the way, I said a low-scoring game because Bowling Green has a good defense. And how many times have I said, and Kelly says it too, Take the better team, get points, defense, the better defensive team getting points. That's what we got here. Bowling Green as my best bet. Bowling Green, people. Mark this down. Bowling Green. Marco went with the Mac, and it is gross, and we are all for it here. So, yes, we've got you covered, Marco. Bowling Green it is. But let's go to a team maybe a little bit uh, more well-known here, or at least I guess should be. Uh, Kelly, because uh, we had Indiana as a best bet last week against Nebraska, and they ended up losing uh, their quarterback, Rourke, but it didn't really matter because they still steamrolled Nebraska. But now they got a Washington team coming off a bye with a little time to prepare here. How does this one go for the favorite Indiana? That's where it gets tough, right? You said you loved Indiana. I thought Nebraska ended up being a square dog, and did they ever? You mentioned that the Hoosiers lost their starting quarterback, and it didn't even matter. It might matter this week. Uh, sometimes when you get the offense rocking and rolling like Indiana does, it's hard to stop that freight train. And listen, I don't want to take away from what we've seen Singetti do in Bloomington. Kudos to this team. They're 6-0 and against the spread only didn't cover one game. But when you start to go as an underdog and you are upsetting teams and then you start to become favorites and the bookmakers start adding a premium next to your name, things start to unravel a little bit. And I think that's what we're going to see here from the Hoosiers. Again, this is not some great Washington team half of the year removed from the national championship last year. We know what we've seen from them so far, though. And they have the ability to win football games if they don't shoot themselves in the foot. And that is what I need from this offense and Will Rogers if they plan on going to Indiana and winning this game outright. Joe mentioned this team is off a bye. And sometimes teams need that week to kind of get ready, right? Number one, pass defense. Boy, I hope Washington is here to play because the Hoosiers do look good. Over a touchdown, plus six and a half. I still think too many points. Keep an eye on this one because the other team I was going to give out as a best bet, I uh, got Michigan State plus fives down to three and a half. So we had mm. to make a quick pivot here on bet on it, but Washington State, or excuse me, Washington was still in my 
long list to make my parlay. So they got quickly upgraded to a best bet. Also looking at Joe's Wisconsin, Texas Tech, maybe North Texas for this week's dog list. Got plenty of dogs to choose from, but Washington certainly on that list for a best bet with Kelly. All right. Uh, since uh, I have completely lost my appetite listening to Marco's best bet, uh, why not? I might as well just pile, uh, pile on here and go with something even more disgusting than Bowling Green. How about we look at the game featuring a one in six team versus another one in six team? It doesn't get any better. Now, this game I don't think can end in a tie, which means somebody has to win it. And I think the disgusting team that's going to win is going to be Utah State, who is heading to Laramie to take on a absolutely offensively challenged Wyoming team, who is absolutely pitiful in so many ways, I can't even begin to tell you. Now, again, both teams, one and six. And the thing that separates these two certainly isn't defense. I can tell you that. The thing that separates these two is what they can do offensively. And it's clear to me that Utah State offensively has gotten better and better, even with Spencer Petras, former Iowa quarterback, uh, under center. They have gone from scoring no points, 21 points, 29 points, 30 points, 34, and they just put up 45 against New Mexico, all in losing efforts, by the way. But the point of the matter is, uh, I don't see how Wyoming can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe and match the offense that Utah State will have in this game. They are It's not pretty, but there is no doubt uh, Wyoming, not a great defense this year. They do have a home field advantage in Larry, but Utah State is looking, and is, the coach has come out and said, you know, the quotes coming from the coach is they're pretty much fed up uh, with losing here, if all things being equal, and the only thing that we're got to go on is whether or not uh, Utah State can score more points than West uh, Wyoming, the answer is absolutely they can. Wyoming, not a good offensive team. They're not going to be able to hold this Utah State team. They're going to make a few more plays. The value to me is all with Utah State at one and six, taking on one and six Wyoming. Take it on the money line. They did open up Wyoming, I believe, a one and a half or a two point favorite. The line is flipped as of Wednesday here. And I agree with it because Utah State will score more points than Wyoming, which is the only thing we care about. So go with Utah State on the money line this week as an even more disgusting best bet for you. And there you have it. Week nine, chock full of disgustingness, chock full of winners, and a whole lot of information here, hopefully to point you in the right direction. And Marco is giving me either the pen look or what are you pointing at, Marco? Go ahead. Uh, just the fact that you forgot to tell viewers uh, what we got going this week here. And I'm sure oh. you're going to say, oh, I was about to do that. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. I was just about to do that, Marco. <laughs> but again, <laughs> uh, Marco, you guys. Marco you was got supposed going? to do it. Marco was supposed to do it before his best bet, but because I had to pivot and I said, wait, let me get some more notes on Washington because I was planning on using Michigan State as my best bet. Mm -hmm. He did not promote himself. Correct. But that's all right. Okay. Well, uh, Marco, um, what do you got going on this week here at Wager Talk? Anything? Yes, I do. Thank oh, you for asking. I appreciate it. Yes. <laughs> Actually, we have site-wide <laughs> special this week. You can get any capper, a 30-day package, normally $299, get it for just $249. Why this month so special? Because every sport will be going during this 30-day period. We got the World Series starting on Friday. Mm -hmm. You've got college and pro football. You've got hockey. You've got NBA basketball. And yeah, college basketball just around the corner as well. Grab a 30-day all-access package. You'll get every play that capper releases during that 30-day period, including all of those 5% plays. You know the 5% plays sell for $35 by themselves. It's all included in a 30-day all-access package. And Joe, thanks. I couldn't have said that better myself. No, I'm just, I I'm guess I did. Wet. Yeah, no, that was very good. I mean, for under $8 a day, Marco, you can't go wrong because you're right. Two weeks away for college basketball. The Yankees uh, have Joe, to get crowned for Joe. their number 27th. Yes, Kevin. 
Sorry. One of the other things you didn't do, you did not ask everybody to like and subscribe. We just hit 180,000 followers on the Wager Talk YouTube channel. It's very important. Kel, what do you think uh, the viewers should be doing uh, right about now? Do you think, <laughs> should they give us a thumbs up? What do you think? Subscribe now. And like and do the thing with the buttons. You people know what you're doing. This isn't your first rodeo. That's right. And don't forget, hit the subscribe button while you're there. Maybe we'll be back again next week. Nobody seems to know for sure. Uh, is there anything else I forgot, guys? Anything else? Are we good? You got your back? Oh, perfect. Hit I'll that meet, subscribe I'll button. meet you guys at Waffle House after the show. Marco's at Waffle House after the show. I was going to say go cats, but I didn't, I didn't think it was appropriate for the show. I wore purple. You know, we it's have black. lost all control of this show so enjoy the week nine bets here guys come back and join us again next week for another edition of the college football bet on it edition until then cash those tickets and we'll bet on it with you let's have a good one